So now what I want to do is I want to go over the different functions that you might have that you might need a microphone for, or instruments, or choirs, or situation like that. What I want to do is, is to go over each one of these and say, oh, yes, I like the way they put the microphone there. I don't particularly care for the way they put the microphone there, okay? Okay, now look at, look at that first mic. There's this person talking there with his arm out, but the microphone is in a good place. That distance for a condenser is okay. You can get a condenser mic, you know, this far away for speakers and it'll be fine. But for a dynamic mic, you want to have it just a little bit closer because the dynamic doesn't pick up well at distances. That's the thing about a dynamic and about speech, everybody. And everybody thinks that recording dialogue is easy, but you're going to find it really isn't. And the basic thing is, is because... You see what happened when I stopped? Somebody cleared their throat. There's a buzz noise. There's a door that opens. Or there's a car that goes by. Or there's all of these things because dialogue is just talking and dead air. Talking and dead air. So you got to be sure you can get them isolated as best you can from any kind of noise that's going to interfere with the fact that that's dialogue. Different mics work for different voices. So you would try the different mics just to see if that's the sound. Some of the announcers like to have uh, that, you know, that mic I brought out. Remember I said Edward R. Murrow used to use this mic. They pick a special microphone so that the sound of their voice is consistent every time it's on. Now, the lavalier, look, at I got two of them on right now. Those are called lavaliers. They're great. They work nice. The thing that you want to be careful with is that material around it, because if you rub it, if the material rubs against it, it gets picked up. So now, uh, vocal solos... Different than the dialogue to me, the person that's doing a speech behind that podium, when I get a vocalist that's in front of the microphone, they're going to reach for the high notes and put out some volume. Now, if they are not trained vocalists, they are not going to adjust the distance from the mic for their volume when they go for the high pitches. What if I'm singing here and then I go way back and I want to sing a little bit and then I can sing up high because i got to reach for that note and I got to put volume behind it. If they do it right here, bit about now what you have to do is you have to set your volume to the loudest possible level so that when they're singing real soft you can hardly hear them. And then when you can hardly hear them because they're quiet on the track that means the noise level of whatever you got is a lot louder than it should be because the volume is only down here of the voice. But you had to be careful because when they screamed and didn't back from the mic the volume was way up here and you couldn't let it distort because then you couldn't use it at all. In every system there is circuit noise. Every time you go through electronics you're going to get circuit noise. Now the noise is, let's just say it's down here at one, let's call it one decibel. Let's just call it that. Okay, and now you're recording this at 20 decibels, let's just say. Well, you're 20 decibels above the circuit noise. Well, now all of a sudden it gets real quiet. That noise stay there. Now all of a sudden your noise of your vocal is down here at 10 decibels. Now you're only 10 decibels above the noise. So now you're going to hear more noise, especially when I turn it up because I can't hear the vocal. I would then have to put a limiter because what a limiter will do is it will lower those loud peaks so that I could maybe lift it up a little bit more. But with that vocalist aiming straight into the mic like that and at that level, if they don't move back when they go to loud, they have a chance of not only messing with the stuff in there, but actually distorting the mic because they're hitting it head on at full volume entirely too close. If it's, especially if it's a condenser that you're going to put there. So what I would do is I would take the microphone, if I could, instead of having it aiming right on, I would give it a 45 degree angle so that hitting the diaphragm, it has a chance to reflect rather than slapping it. That's the only thing I would change about that vocal mic situation. 